Uh, my name is Christopher Helm. I, uh, I work for Esri, so um, please, this is my Twitter account. You can haze me all you want on Twitter. You can troll me, and all the trolls. And, um, I don't care. It's okay. Um, uh, I, I used to work for a company called GUIQ. Um, we were bought by Esri a year ago, and um, we are sort of in the middle of leading the efforts for um, Esri to you know, work more openly and things like that. So we're here and, and talking about all the stuff that we love to talk about. Um, and so this is also the third talk today, and I think it's kind of um, not on purpose, but things will accumulate uh, throughout my talks when I give multiple talks in one day. This is my thought process to just melds them into one. So um, there's only probably a, a few a few of you that actually have seen all three, and so maybe inside jokes and things like that you you won't get. But um, the the goal of this talk is to really um, uh, you know, ultimately, I just wanted to piss people off and, and make people kind of uh, look at me like I'm, I'm a, uh, either a, a um, ignorant or arrogant or completely misinformed JavaScript developer. And that's probably the truth in that um, I think the, uh, <laughs> um, the, the world I live in is a bubble. I, I, I definitely eat, sleep, and breathe JavaScript all the time. And, um, and I th think it's the, the answer to everybody's problem and, and the cure to all, all, all that ails everybody. So, um, so yeah, so I titled this talk Geospatial JavaScript because the, the other talk uh, titles I, I was thinking of was well, or Chris Helm's love affair with, uh, with JavaScript and the internet um, or as you might be here for a title called GIS is not dead. It's coming for you and it's been drinking JavaScript. And this, the title of this sort of came when I was... Um, I was thinking about zombies one day, and um, and I actually submitted this talk to have uh, myself as a presenter, as well as zombie Christopher Helm. And I had this big zombie theme in mind uh, because there's a, a friend of mine named Sophia Parafina that is active in the open community who who um, is famous for kind of saying that GIS is dead. And I think that's that's sort of like this this idea that. Um, the web has killed GIS, and, and if, we, if we try to take these concepts of GIS to the web, um, it won't work, and it's not something that we want to do. And I think she's partially right, but this is kind of thinking along the lines of, it's not dead, damn it, I love GIS, I'm trained in GIS. Um, it's, just, it's just changing, and it needs to adapt to, this, to the evolution of the web. Um, so my goal today is really geo for all. Right? I, I put this in there this morning because it's the theme of the, ta or of the conference and, and what does geo for all mean in, in my sense. And geo for all really, to me, means geo for the masses. It's GIS for the masses. It's GIS for everybody. And to me, that, that happens on the internet. And so my argument today is that the, the web is central to what we do. Um, it's central to our lives. It's central to our everyday sort of world. I mean, if you don't believe me, it's look, at, look at how this conference has changed in five years. There's Twitter and there's, there's things that we're constantly sort of on the web. And so the web is central to my life and, and JavaScript is essential to the web. And so that's sort of my argument that I'm going to step through a little bit. And I'm probably going to make statements that you don't agree with or maybe I'm just out there. And I think I'll probably admit to them while I'm going along. So I'm giving you lots of fodder to either talk, talk crap about me on Twitter or just, you know, Storm out. Um, but so, so really, like, why is JavaScript missing from this conference? And, and I think I asked myself this, and it, it feels to me like there's not enough JavaScript. And maybe I'm, again, this is me saying, what the hell? Where is the JavaScript? Where's the innovation in the geo space and the JavaScript? And why aren't they here doing this? Why aren't we talking about the things that are happening in the JavaScript environment at this conference? And, and I will admit, Today, there's been more JavaScript talks than there have been the previous two days. And so I'm just misinformed on this. And that the, <laughs> the, the uh, friend Stephen Ottens, who's over in Chippy's talk next door on cycle geography, um, he's talking about real-time web mapping today. There's a talk on D3 today. So, so these are the things I hadn't seen until, until today and, and thinking, man, wait a minute. Like, some of the things I'm going to say in my talk are totally off base because they are here. But... Um, before I start digging into the sort of the concepts of, of how I see the web has evolved and, and, and how JavaScript is central to that, um, I thought it'd be, be worth sort of lightening the mood a little bit and talking about this great video here called What. And um, in this talk, uh, he mentions sort of the, um, the funny bits and pieces of, 
of JavaScript, and it's and it's really you know fun oddities. So these are a few that he points out. And that does anyone know uh, what an array plus an array equals in JavaScript? So, so it's an empty string, right? Um, like and so in his talk, I'm I'm totally stealing this. This is this is all him. Um, he's he's great. He's hilarious. Um, the uh, he basically flashes up a big screen of what? <laughs> like, um, and then, uh, so what is a, a, an array plus, a, plus an object equal? Does anyone know? What's that? Zero? No, just, a, just an object, string, a string object. <laughs> it's a string, literally. I'm missing the quotes here. It's not just an object, it's a string object. Um, and then, okay, so what's this equal, right? Uh, Yvonne was right. Zero. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, ah, like, so, so, right. <laughs> so as I as I sit here and say, man, I think JavaScript is awesome. I love it so much. Um, keep this in mind that I mean everything is is <laughs> is taken with a grain of salt. That it's it's really can be an absurd language sometimes. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, and so there's more. Um, so what's a uh, an object plus an object equal? Right. Remember, object plus array equal to zero. So this equals course, you would guess. Nil, of course. <laughs> but, so you get around those things when you're falling in love with JavaScript. And um, it, takes, it takes being able, it's like any good marriage, right? You, you learn to compromise. You deal with the faults of whatever you're working with. Um, but so I thought that's funny. Uh, I had to throw this in here. I really had to fit it in just, just to sort of like keep people grounded with the fact that it's kind of a crazy language. But the web is a lot of JavaScript. Um, and when I started thinking about this talk, I started thinking about the web, and I think about how the web has evolved. And, um, and you know, the, the, with the web evolving, our perception of JavaScript also has evolved. And there's a, there's a famous quote, I'm really bad at actually attributing quotes, but um, it was, you know, 10 years ago, um, if you were a JavaScript developer, you wouldn't be taken seriously. And nowadays, if you don't know JavaScript, you're not really taken seriously. And, and I, I honestly believe that. That so much of how we work um, with, with in the geospatial industry is, is visualization, is sharing data. And that requires this, this, this at least some knowledge of JavaScript um, or something that compiles to JavaScript, I guess you could say. Um, so, I mean, in the course of web evolution, you have new tech is born every day, right? There's new things growing. It's this rapidly evolving place. And that's why it's fascinating, right? It's great because like, you, can, you can take six months off and come back and something completely new has changed. And, and there's new processing tools, new ways of thinking about um, how we process video and, and these industries that are just blazingly fast moving ahead and rethinking the way that they've traditionally done it because of new advancements. Um, then there's these new data formats. I mean, this is, this is huge stuff in the past five years. Like, um, you know, you have GeoJSON, uh, what, what CardaDB guys are talking about with Torque with these time cubes of data. This is this growth that, that really just comes through solving a problem that they had. Um, so, so really what, what web evolution means is that browsers get fatter, right? This, this is really what happens in web evolution, but it's a good thing. Because we have these big desktops with 16 gigabytes of, you know, I mean, this has four cores and 16 gig of RAM. It's, it's a beast. It's awesome. The fatter it gets, the more access to the actual machine it gets, the better. <coughs> Things like WebGL, or Web, <laughs> WebGL, um, WebGL, right? Access to the GPU. This is, this is the pipe into this massive powerhouse that we need. We're using this for visualization, but we're not doing geoprocessing on it. But why is that? Right? This, is, this is what I'm asking myself. And, and who, you know, there's, there's few and far between, the likes of Migursky, uh, Mike Migursky from Steam, and doing a lot of work with, with WebGL and exploring ways to render vector data and process it and analyze it on the fly. Things that it's really, really good at. If you look at the gaming industry, I mean, they're so far ahead of us in terms of the things they do and attempt to do that and we're still stuck with this sort of relationship of server databases and move it over and, oh, we don't want to buffer things on the client. Like, it's absurd. Um, so then we have things like web workers. Also makes it sort of like, holy cow, web workers are great. I mean, they break the chain of processing, um, the, the event loop in the, in the browser. We can do big loops in, in, in web workers, throw things back and forth, spawn multiple web workers up, do things in the background, asynchronous development. These things are not mentioned at this conference. Who's talking about web workers? I mean, I think people know what web workers are. I'm not talking about what they are, but no one else is really exploring this concept of projections in web workers or, or you know, big, heavy analytics. 
Um, and again, maybe I'm off base. I mean, this is this is the reason come talk to me and t punch me in the face or tell me I'm, I'm an idiot because I didn't think of this. But I, I spend my day thinking about these things and how I want to do these and um, things like web sockets, right? Um, web sockets aren't being talked about. St Stephen Otten's talked about web sockets earlier, so I'm totally wrong. Um, WebRTC. Who's mentioned WebRTC this week? Who even knows what our, our WebRTC is, right? Right, one guy. <laughs> This is huge. I mean, this is in the latest versions of Chrome and Firefox, real-time communication layers for like doing things like Google Hangouts, right? For like video communication. That's a massive amount of data, way more data being transferred in WebRTC applications than, than we would probably want to be doing in our vector mapping application, right? They, they, those people have solved these problems. I think this is a call to action for us to explore these things and drive it forward. And maybe next year at FOS4G, we have WebRTC, like bleeding, bleeding, bleeding edge technology being explored. Um, so, so then when the web sort of becomes an increasingly um, uh, powerful tool that we have, right, for, for exploring things, then usage goes up. It becomes part of our lives. I'm addicted to the internet, right? Like when I was in London, so, like, it's, uh, or what did Festival of the Nerds say? Like, you feel safe when you're on the internet. <laughs> it's totally true. I mean, I'm, I'm super geek, right? Like, I'm, I, I, I need the internet to feel this weird feeling. But um, the, uh, the web becomes life. It, when I'm dancing between Wi-Fi hotspots, it's like I lose myself. Um, <laughs> how much time do I have? How much is left? Oh, all right. So we're going to blaze through this. I always, <coughs> give me 15. All right. <laughs> Um, we don't need questions. There, there'll be no questions. <laughs> 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 the, uh, okay, so... Um, you right, you can grab me though. We're just going to go a whole way through, even though it's hot in here. This is why I wanted to move the bigger room. Um, so, so on the web, right, we, we use it to disseminate ideas. If you come from an academic background like myself, like uh, you go to conferences like this to disseminate your publications and share things and, and you get paid to do it and it's about networking and sharing. But that's what, the, that's what the internet is to GIS right now. It's visualization. It's sharing data and disseminating ideas. Um, so, so how do GIS and the web sort of fit? Like where does GIS belong on the web? Is it, is it just going to be this sort of um, is the door? I think the door just swung open. I think it closed. Um, is it just going to continue to be this sort of like, well, I'm going to do all my processing on the back end and have this big round trip and think about ways to just dance around that issue? Um, but really, no. I mean, GIS has to evolve. It has to change. The questions we ask and the way we ask them has to evolve with that evolution of the web. And I'm, and I'm not just meaning, you know, making maps with, with libraries. It's like asking geospatial questions. And when I go back to this idea for geo for all, it's not just a, making a map of a visualization. It's, it's exposing things like clips and buffers and things like that, geo web, GIS on the web, in a new way that isn't just bringing a, a user interface to the web that's, a, a, you know, QGIS on the web. That's, that's, to me, that's absurd, right? And this is where people start punching me because... Talking crap about QGIS. Um, the uh, don't do that. No. Um, <laughs> the uh, I did that in my last talk and got hammered for it. So, um, uh, so so in this in this evolved world again, my argument JavaScript is so central. It's it's everywhere we are. And we have things like Leaflet and Open Layers and D3, right? I mean, diving into D3. I don't think Paul's here. Paul's not here. I was hoping you'd be here. Um, he was in my last talk. So uh, D3 is data-driven documents. Until today, no one, no one mentioned what D3 was. Um, I, my colleagues at work rip on me all the time for being total D3 fanboy, right? A self-admitted, complete fanboy. Um, but what D3 is, 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 is data-driven documents, but it's really just JavaScript glue around taking advantage of existing web standards that are proven to be you know, already existing on the web, like SVG, CSS, and HTML. That's all it really is. It's just manipulating data to, to inform and build documents around those technologies. Um, so this is a quote from Paul Ramsey um, earlier this year. Uh, it was a tweet. Uh, I don't know when. The June 13th. And it was like, D3 is the new flash. There, I said it. Right? And, uh, and I think this, this really just shows that Paul's a little misinformed. Um, and, and I think he's... he's uh, see, <laughs> Right? Paul's Paul's Superboy around here. He's Superman. Like he's like, he's like, oh shit. I mean, your talk is, is packed. We're gonna run it again, right? It's Paul. It's a big deal. 
but D3 is the new Flash. I mean, Flash to me is, I mean, again, I'm a JavaScript guy, so I'm going to bash Flash. But um, the, uh, what that implies is this idea that it, that it has somewhere to go. I mean, and I think really what he's getting, getting down to is this, this follow-up from someone else who replied to him saying, uh, look at my very beautiful screen filling one-off uh, data visualization, you know, new instrument, same tune. Right? And it's totally true, but it's not just true of D3. Again, it's misinformed. It's, it's not really like a, uh, a statement you say, well, it's D3 is exactly like Flash because you build this crappy website. Right? You can build a crappy website in anything. And JavaScript can be spaghetti regardless of whatever library and tool chain. Who, who works with jQuery? Right? It's the most spaghetti like, prone language or, or framework in the world. Um, Okay, so, so really when I, when I think about D3, I start thinking about freedom for web cartography. Freedom to, to make beautiful visualizations and do it however you want to do it. Um, so I, I felt like I had to throw D3 into this talk because um, Jason Davies didn't show up for his keynote the other day. And uh, that, that totally bummed me out because I was like, my trip to London, my trip to, to England was like, Jason Davies and shake his hand and hang out with Jason Davies and Vladimir as well. It's like, it's like this guy's a rock star. He's totally awesome and it was super bummed that he's not here. But um, so he's, he's doing a lot of the projections work behind D3. You see this really awesome stuff. This is all, it's kind of grainy on here, but it's a um, uh, map projection transition stuff. And, and this is always like the ooh and ah of the people who don't understand. Yeah, wow. right, thank you, thank you, thank you. It changes projections on the fly. Um, but this is great because it shows, it shows us that one, like we don't have to be using Web Mercator. I mean, Web Mercator really sucks. And if you're ever doing something that, that moves around to the poles, I mean, come on, you can't be, you can't be serious. So, um, so he's got, he's got all the work for, you know, the, the D3 supports all these geo projections. It's, it's awesome. Uh, you can, you know, make really ugly maps or really cool maps. Um, but then there's, so now I'm, I'm starting to get into like more of the interactive part of the, of the talk. There's less me just standing here spouting off. Um, so, so now, uh, so, sort of like to prove my point, I'm just going through examples of things I think are really cool, right? And, um, and so I think, oh man, that's now loading as an H. All right, here, hold on. Wait, don't roll off. You know the web I know, it's, it's a broken link though. Something in my code is, um, Ah, here, let me see if I can, yeah, yeah, yeah sweet. That also has a thing called memory, um, history. So uh, this, is, this is really cool work. Um, this is stuff that, that, that me, myself, at Esri, I'm actually working on a lot of adaptive uh, composite projection stuff. And uh, but this isn't my work at all. Like none of this actually is my work in this, in this talk. Some of it is, but um, the cool thing about this is it's done uh, as sort of copying an algorithm from a guy named Bernard Jenny who works at Oregon State. He did a lot of work with composite projection stuff. You've probably seen something that looks very similar to this. I'll sit down so you can see it. Um, so as I zoom in, right, the projection just morphs and changes, right? Becomes more appropriate for, for what I want to see. Like this is the thing I want to see on the client done. I want to see things uh, in appropriate projections and albers and, and things that make sense for where you are on the earth. I don't want to see web Mercator maps anymore. Um, web Mercator makes sense for when you're zoomed in, right? There's bugs and stuff, but um, all right. Let's, let's move on. Um, so, so then when I think about the web, I think about the rise of the API. Um, I think that, that data has become pervasive. Data has become dynamic. And we need to rethink how we think about things on the web because of this fact. Everyone knows what an API is. People interact with APIs. It didn't exist five, 10 years ago. Um, so so when, the, when the APIs sort of come out, and we start thinking about data, um, we start also rethinking and tooling our, our idea of like, what it means to be a client, and what it means to be a server. And we start to blur that line, right? And that's what WebRTC does. That's what WebSockets do. That's what things like REST hooks do. They just, they make it like one big happy family. And so how does GIS adapt to that, right? Like how do we start rethinking our problems? And the answer is really slowly, right? We, 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 what, what we're seeing here is that we don't think about these, we're, we're not on the forefront of how these new technologies work. We're not changing our questions to adapt to how data is transferred on the web. We're not blurring that line enough like we need to be. We need to be marrying post-GIS into the clients and things like that. You're thinking about these things. And isn't it an awesome kid? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. That's, that's us. The, the kid, that's us. The cat is the web, right? <laughs> Just bam. I saw him. I was like, yeah. 
That's it. All right, so, so then think about if we grow, if you're growing up today, right, and you're coming out of grad school, there's probably undergrad students here, grad, stu grad school students. That's when I learned geo, right, undergrad and grad. And if I was growing up today, would I learn map server like I did? Like, would I be teaching map server in my class? Would I be teaching leaflet? Or would I be teaching D3, right? I mean, these are, these are changes. Like, I don't, I don't think, and this is another misinformed statement, probably, because my friend Steve's standing up at the back. It's like, no, people use map server all the time. And, I, and, and again, like, I think map server is great. It totally is great. And geo server is great. But am I going to be teaching a class on, on sort of web and GIS and be teaching that anymore? I think, I don't know. But so, so it's an interesting question. Just think about if you were growing up. So, but, but then reality check. It's like, I'm not talking about like just getting rid of things like PostGIS because it's totally hot, right? It's like my favorite tool ever. It's what got me off Esri software. I'm an Esri guy, but um, I, I am now. But when I was in grad school, I learned, I learned PostGIS. And the first time I wrote an SQL statement, it was like my mind was blown, right? It's, the, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Um, I now work for Esri, but I, like, I'm, I think it's great still. And, um, Two minutes. All right. So, so what's missing from this conference? So I, I think TopoJSON is missing from this conference. If people don't know about TopoJSON, that's a serious problem. I think this conference should have been, like, there should be 10 talks on TopoJSON. Maybe one would do, but um, Node.js. Did anyone talk about Node.js this week? Okay. Steve talked about Node.js. Sure. Okay. Several people talked. So I'm just misinformed. Um, I wasn't only able to make it to every talk. Right. Um, so other things we can look at, like learning from Node.js, package management, unbelievable package management and, and, and tools that come out of this really fast moving uh, JavaScript environment called NPM, Grunt, Bower, Yaoman, like scaffolding tools that make JavaScript awesome. <laughs> so, um, so in the end, like, where's my ArcViewJS? Uh, where's my ArcViewJS? That's what I want. I want to go to client-side geospatial analysis. I want to be answering the question not about how we, how we transfer results up to the client, but how do we, how do we persist client-based analysis on the server? How do we push things back? That becomes the new problems we start to solve. I said a few people two years ago um, at Fossil4G in Denver. I was sitting around like Chippy and Stephen Ottens and I'm like, we want to write our new JS. Um, so uh, I put on a conference called JSGO. Uh, we're going to do it in San Francisco next year. Uh, I, yesterday I was going to be in Denver. Today it's going to be in San Francisco because <laughs> um, I've been overruled. Um, the uh, it's it's the JavaScript and Geospatial Festival of Love. Um, it's total get down with each other with uh, with JavaScript. We love it. I, I, I brought up I brought up the idea of you know code love uh, for people on GitHub in my last talk. So this is total code love conf. Um, all right, so now demo stuff, and this is Rocky and Apollo hugging. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was sweet. All right, no, no I got to show these things off. Um, so, so this thing called Walkshed. I'm a big fan of this guy, Aaron Ogle. Um, Walkshed is this beautiful client-side raster-based analysis for computing uh, uh, cost, uh, cost distance pads on, uh, on a client. So you basically com compute a, or build a cost grid and then compute distances across that. Absolutely love it. He showed this off at JSGO last year, and it was totally, totally blew my mind. I don't think anybody in the audience actually get, got why it was so great. Um, so I'll go back. So then there's Shapefile.js. Um, this is the guy I uh, was mentioning in the last talk. So Shapefile.js is rendering uh, shapefiles on the client. Like it doesn't get more GIS than that, <laughs> right? Like, but doing this on the client, I think, is great. I mean, you're starting to see these things, but they're not being talked about it at FOS4G, which really upsets me. Um, <coughs> there's JSTS. Has anyone ever heard of JSTS? All right, good. There's people that know. There's people that are aware of how awesome JSTS is. Um, I'm not, basically, you can go to this GitHub repo. This is JavaScript topology suite. It's, the only problem with it is that it's literally a port of JTS and GIOS, right? I mean, it could not be any more exactly a port of those two projects. And, and the problem with that is you know, those, two are, those two projects are great. But in JavaScript, then, it, that makes really, really obfuscated, crazy code. <laughs> and it's, it's totally confusing. It's really hard to extend. So the barrier to entry on that project is really high and really annoying. Um, so I wrote something called Shapely.js. Um, big fail. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, it does a few things. It buffers. That's it. <laughs> right. And it's a messed up demo. I didn't clean them up. So I can like, I don't know why the states are in there, but um, I can buffer. I have buffer. <laughs> Woo! 
really, really not a good project though. It's not being supported because we're, um, well, you know, I'll just go back a little, we're out of time. But just, just bear with me, bear with me. Um, in my last talk, I introduced something called Esri Coop. Um, Coop is GeoJSON uh, as feature services, which in Esri land is uh, like, you know, what we, what we do. And so um, <laughs> what, uh, what I want to share with this is, is uh, in my last talk, again, these meld together a little bit. Uh, GitHub started releasing this idea of, of geospatial GitHub, right? And, um, and they, they do things like uh, cluster automatically for points over 750 points. Um, so you can zoom in. Oh, sweet, that's awesome. Um, I thought, you know, I, I don't like, I don't really, I think clients are clustering. Sweet, this is great. I, I um, have some ideas about server-side sharing, you know, automatic persisted clusters. But um, this is awesome because it's, you know, for the masses. But it's a really crappy way to view a data set. And um, I think, I think if, if we look at something like Terraformer, which my colleagues in Portland wrote, um, it's a client-side and node server-based uh, JavaScript implementation of, of JSON format parsing, as well as spatial indexing, um, storing data, and uh, uh, doing simple geospatial contains. I think what, what's happening is we're turning Shapely JS into Terraformer, we're bringing Terraformer uh, to have more things like actual operations, like buffer and clip and things like that. Um, so now I have, I have um, oh, geo hugs. That was the end. Um, but I want to show this first. Uh, so, so I did this thing. I'll come over here. Um, hold on. Just shrink it down a little bit so you can see it. Uh, well, that's fine. So this is, I, I, this is code I wrote uh, last week just to have something <laughs> new to show during this talk. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool. Because you use a coop, it pulls in dynamic data from, uh, live data from uh, GitHub and, and aggregates it on the client with Terraformer. So, so what's happening here is it pulls in TopoJSON to render counties. Um, these, are, these are vector counties. They're, they're responsive. If I change it, they're sort of slow. But um, if, I, if I really shrink it down, it will, it will start to shrink. And that's just responsive. It's just re recalculating all that. It's not optimized. It's just sort of an example. But um, so one thing I thought would be cool is I'll, I'll do this like sample data sets and, and say, like, oh, I can aggregate, um, uh, aggregate points. Those, those came down. They're cached a little bit. So I have some improvements just for demo sake. But um, they do the aggregation against an R tree index of, of, of counties in the US. So, so on the client side, we take this topo JSON. Uh, we build it in. We shove it into an R tree right, index. And then, and then basically render it. And then as points come down, we just touch each, uh, touch each point and do a contains on that. And then do an actual intersection just to verify. Uh, so we do ski areas across the US. Um, I'm a big skier. So, um, so we do Dunkin' Donuts. And I've, I'm slowing it down a little bit. And it's actually still really fast. Um, we do adaptive, um, adaptive scaling here where, uh, yeah, I'll explain that later. Um, I call it a rain. Yeah, I think, and then, oh, so, so yeah, then yesterday I got, um, got this idea about uh, doing a web socket, right? So I'm sitting here spouting off, oh, we need to be using sockets and RTC and things like that. Um, so I have this, I have this, I have all these, I'm doing, I do a lot of streaming with web sockets and stuff like that. So um, I thought it'd be cool if we do, um, you can barely see this, I guess, but. Um, so we could do a live web sock I have of, uh, this is I think uh, like United Flights over 24 hours or something. It's just a loop, like it's, it's a really big data set that just you tap into at any point and sit there and, and, and have like test data to mess with like streaming. And, um, and so this is an example of just, right, this just persists and goes on. And am I over time? Yeah. All right. That's it, thanks. It's really hot. It's really hot in here.